Welcome to Rebel Holiday and You. Today's lesson is on color, which is the fifth, and in some ways we could say the most powerful of the five design elements. Now, the reason it's most powerful is because it affects us and you in three ways. The first way it affects you is psychologically. That when you wear certain colors, you feel a certain way. Some colors will make you feel more serious, some colors might make you feel more powerful, and some colors might make you feel more reserved, or some colors might make you feel more gregarious. Color also affects you emotionally. And this is just very basic. I mean, there may be, for example, certain colors that you're just really drawn to and you just love them, and other colors that you're really turned off by, colors that make you feel kind of happy and colors that make you feel a little sad or a little depressed. And then the third way color affects you is visually. Now, it not only affects you visually, it affects other people looking at you. So a personal example is that for many years, being a redhead, growing up, I was told to wear rust, which is kind of a burnt orange sort of color. And like a good little redhead, I did. And I never put two and two together for a long time, but certain days, I was selling real estate, it was my first career, and certain days, people would come up to me and say, are you feeling okay today? Someone else later would say, are you all right? Are you tired? Are you ill? And by the time six people have asked you and it's only three o'clock in the afternoon, you start thinking, well, you know, maybe, maybe, something, maybe something is going on with me. And little did I know, I was wearing colors that brought out green, kind of a blue-green actually, in my skin. And this could be happening to you too. It could be happening to anybody who is using color and not really knowing how it interacts with them. So let's talk about color from a conceptual standpoint and let me give you a few core concepts that are important to know. The first thing is you may remember that the primary colors, there are three primary colors and the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. And when we combine the primary colors, red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, and red and blue create purple. And many of us know this, but what we don't always know is how the subtleties work. Those colors that are very, very bright and have not been changed in any way are called pure hues. Now, there was a scientist around the turn of the century, the 1900s, who was named Albert Munsell. And he was the first person to really come up with a sophisticated, scientifically based system for ordering color and for numbering color. And that's the system that I use to this very day. And what he said is that the colors can be arranged around a wheel as according to the pure hues. So you would have a number of reds around a wheel from the coolest red to the warmest red. So what do I mean by cool red and warm red? Well, a cool red has more blue in it. It's like a burgundy or even a red purple. Whereas a warm red has more orange in it and eventually it becomes orange. Any color, red, yellow, green, blue, any color has warm and cool variations. So for example, a warm blue is more on the turquoise side. It's got some green in it. Whereas a cool blue is more purplish. A warm green is like a yellow green or an olive green. And a cool green is more like a teal. 
Now, by the way, all these color names are good for cocktail parties. I mean, they're, they're good socially, I suppose, to talk to people. Somebody, one of your friends gets a new dress and they're telling you about it. And you say, well, what color is it? And she says, oh, well, it's kind of a teal. Well, that means something to you. Yet, if we gave paints to 30 art students and we said, okay, I want everyone to paint teal, guess how many teals we would get? We'd get 30 versions of teal because color can really only be numbered to be accurately identified. And all of the names, cherry red, lemon yellow, those are just conversation, which is okay, it's great, because it does have meaning, but it's not a specific meaning, and that's important to remember. So now we know that there are three primary colors. When you mix the primary colors, you get the secondary colors. All of these primary and secondary colors can be pure hues. And the reason I chose these two paintings here is that these paintings are pure hues. They're colors that are very bright and really haven't been altered. Now, once you have a pure hue, let's say a pure hue of red, there are three things you can do to that color without changing the hue. So when I say without changing the hue, again, that means without changing it from, say, a warm red to a cooler red, without changing the temperature. When you add yellow or blue to red, you're changing the hue. So without changing the hue, there are only three things you can do. You can add white, and it gives you a tint. You can add gray or black, which gives you a shade and you can add brown, which gives you a tone. And that's where the terms tints, tones, and shades come from. Now those are actually art terms. Those are terms that artists use when they're describing the qualities in colors. So those terms are more accurate and in some ways more useful than just saying, you know, cherry red or something but they're still not as specific as they need to be to be useful to someone in selecting, for example, their clothing. But nonetheless, I would like to show you what they look like so that you have an idea of what I mean when I say tints, tones, and shades. So let's start with tints. All right, these colors are all tints. What that means again is that they have white added to the pure color. Now, if you take the pure hue and you add just a little bit of white, well, it stays still pretty bright and even almost as dark as it was. If you add more and more of that color, or excuse me, if you add more and more of the white to the color, then what happens, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter and it becomes a tint. And eventually, if you keep adding white, it gets back to white. You may remember this from playing with paints if you've done that. So these colors are tints. Now, let's talk about shades. These colors are shaded. So what they have in them is they have some black or gray. And you can see how they're more subdued, they're more subtle. They're less bright and they're not light. And these colors can be dark and they can even be light and shaded. We're gonna talk about why in just a minute. Now we're gonna look at tones. So these colors, with my favorite rust, right? These colors are tones. So they have brown added to the pure hue. And the tones are earthy, they're mixed, they're warm. Now let's talk about who would wear each kind 
of color. But I also want to emphasize that in the range, for example, of tones, there's thousands of colors. And even if you as an individual can wear predominantly toned colors, it still begs the question of, okay, how bright can I wear? And how dark? And how light? And how dull? So every color, in addition to having a hue, it has intensity, which is the brightness, dullness, and it has value, which is the lightness, darkness. And ideally, what you or anybody else wants to know and should want to know about color is how light can you go, how dark can you go, how bright can you go, and how dull can you go. Now, when I say, can you go, what does that mean? I mean, you can wear anything you want, right? Of course you can. And yet what you'll find is that because color interacts with color, it's important to have colors that interact with you in a complementary way, in a harmonious way. So there are scientific principles called the scientific principles of color interaction that talk about how colors interact. A great classic, easy to identify example is at Christmas time, I'm sure you've noticed that the red looks so red and the green looks so green, happens every year. Why is that? It's because red and green are opposites on the color wheel and so they visually intensify. If you've ever done any scuba diving or snorkeling, maybe you've noticed the principles of complementary colors underwater. So for example, if you've ever seen a fish that's blue and orange, those are complementary colors. Or if you've ever seen a fish that's purple and yellow, again, complementary colors. Now how this affects individuals is, for example, if you have a great deal of yellow in your skin or gold, many shades of purple may be a problem for you because they will accentuate that yellow and can make you look even sallow. If you have some blue-gray in your skin, you're going to have to be careful with yellow and orange because it can accentuate those. And the wrong shade of red on anyone can bring out green in their skin. And you might be thinking, but I don't have green in my skin. But you know what, you really do, and so do I. And the green is in the shadows and the lines. And it's not something, if you're wearing colors that are in your harmony range, it's not something that would happen. It's when you wear colors that create a negative skin color change, those are the ones I say, you know, don't wear, or you can't wear. You can wear whatever you want. And ideally, you want colors that make you look lighter and clear and rested and younger. And you probably don't want colors that make you look old, tired, or ill. So with color, it's very important because it affects you three ways. It affects you psychologically, it affects you emotionally, it affects you visually. And the people who are looking at you have the same thing. They have a psychological reaction, an emotional reaction, and a visual reaction, whether they know it or not. So I invite you to start observing the effects that colors have in your life and in your look. Ideally, you always want to check this is with as much natural light as possible. And if you see skin color changes, that's good. You also want to remember though, this is pretty subtle because I spent almost a year of my life training just on color. And I can remember when I would sit next to my teachers and they would hold a color. We had thousands of colors that we worked with and I still do. She would hold a color up to someone and say, to me, I was sitting next to her, look at that. 
And in the beginning, I would think, what? You know, I couldn't always see it. And other times, and as my eye got more and more trained, I could make more and more distinctions, better distinctions, about how those colors affected me and affected others. So start playing with color, start enjoying it, start noticing how you look in different colors to the extent that you can. It's a matter of training your eye. And what you really may want to put on your list of things to do sometime is to have your individual range determined because there is a range of colors that are harmonious and beautiful on you. And that's the range that you ideally want to dress from and you want to surround yourself with. So I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. This is Rebel Holiday, signing off.